And so the universe ended. One of the major selling points of that wholly remarkable book, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, apart from its relative cheapness and the fact that it has the words Don't Panic written in large friendly letters on the cover, is its compendious and occasionally accurate glossary. For instance, the statistics relating to the geosocial nature of the universe are set out between pages 576,324 and 576,326. The simplistic style is partly explained by the fact that its editors, having to meet a publishing deadline, copied the information off the back of a packet of breakfast cereal hastily embroidering it with a few footnotes in order to avoid prosecu prosecution under the incomprehensibly tortuous galactic copyright laws. It's interesting to note that a later and wilier editor sent the book backwards in time, through a temporal warp, and then successfully sued the breakfast cereal company for infringement of the same laws. Here is a sample in both headings and footnotes. The Universe. Some information to help you live in it. 1. Area, infinite, as far as anyone can make out. Two, imports, none. It's impossible to import things into an infinite area, there being no outside to import things in from. Three, exports, none. C, imports. Four, rainfall, none. Rain cannot fall because in an infinite space there is no up for it to fall down from. Five, population, none. It is known that there are an infinite number of worlds, but not everyone is inhabited. Therefore, there must be a finite number of inhabited worlds. Any finite number divided by infinity is as near to nothing as makes no odds. So if any, every planet in the universe has a population of zero, then the entire population of the universe must also be zero, and any people you may actually meet from time to time are merely the products of the drone's imagination. 6. Monetary units. None. In fact, there are three freely convertible currencies in the universe, but the Altarian dollar has recently collapsed. The Ophladian pobble bead is only exchangeable for other Flanian pobble beads, and the Triganic pew doesn't really count as money. Its exchange rate of six lingies to one pew is simple, but since a lingi is a triangular rubber coin 6,800 miles long each side, no one has ever collected enough to own one pew. Lingies are not negotiable currency because the Galactic Bank refuses to deal in fiddling small change. From this basic pre premise it's very simple to prove that the galactic banks are also the product of a deranged imagination. 7. Sex. None. Well, actually, there is an awful lot of this, largely because of the total lack of money, trade, banks, rainfall, or anything else that might keep all the non-existent people in the universe occupied. However, it's not worth embarking on a long discussion of now, because it really is terribly complicated. For further information, see chapters 7, 9, 10, 11, 14, 16, 17, 19, 21 to 84, inclusive, and most of the rest of the book. I am no Peter Jones.